Hi folks, in this video I'm gonna show you how to create policy called contract in ACI and attach it to the EPGs. Afterwards I'm going to verify this policy. So in the demo the provider consumer relationship is shown based on the well-known server client FTP protocol. So what are we trying to achieve here? We want client residing in the EPG2 with the IP address 192.168.2.102 communicate with the FTP server with IP address 192.168.1.101 in the EPG1. So there are separate bridge domains configured for both EPGs with different subnets, okay? And they are the part of the same VRF in the same tenant. So to allow this communication, we need to create contract and attach it between these two EPGs, okay? There are some prerequisites which are listed in detail in the video description. So those things are already pre-configured in the demo environment. So we have our VMM integration in place. We have our tenant already created with the VRF, with the EPGs, with the bridge domains, and also we have our uh, virtual machines uh, spin up with applications installed. Okay, so let's move on. First, let's evaluate our environment. So I'm gonna go to tenants and see our application profile demo application uh, and check our EPG. So I'm gonna start with EPG01. Let's go to the policy general tab. Okay, and we see that this is associated with the bridge domain BD01, which is associated with the VRF, the VRF ATX VRF. Okay. So let's go back and let's go to the operational tab. Okay, and as we see, there is one endpoint uh, in this uh, in this EPG, which is actually the FTP server. Okay, great. Let's evaluate also uh, if we have any contracts associated to this EPG at this point. And no, the list is the list is empty. So let's evaluate the EPG zero two as well. First, let's go to the to the policy and to the general tab. As we see, this EPG is associated with the different bridge domain, BD02, but this BD it resides in the same VRF, so ATX VRF, okay? Let's close it, let's go back and let's go to the operational tab. Here we see that there is one endpoint connected with this IP address, which is the FTP client. Lastly, let's check if we have any contract associated. No, we don't have any. Okay, great. So uh, let's evaluate our virtual machines right now. VM1, uh, this is the IP address of this VM. And also we have FTP server already running here. Okay. Let's check VM2, so the client VM. We have this IP address configured on this virtual machine and let's check if we can communicate to the FTP server and let's try this connection will fail yes this connection fails at this point let's uh, check if this is related to the FTP so let's try to ping and we cannot ping so this is not related to the uh, to the FTP this is related to the communication in general okay so this is because we don't have any contracts, so any rules between these two EPGs, and by default, this communication is not allowed. Okay, so let's expand contracts and click on the filters. Right click. Okay, create filter. Our filter is called ATX FTP filter, and I'm going to have two entries. The first one will be for FTP data, so it's going to be TCP uh, port 20. And the second one, I'm going to create the FTP for, for commands, so it's going to be TCP port 21. TCP, yeah, 21. 
Okay, great. I could have done this also in one filter using the port range from two, okay? So the filter is created right now. Let's go to contract standard and let's uh, right click and create the standard contract. Okay, so let's put a name here, ATX permit FTP and let's add our subject. So ATX FTP. Okay, and uh, let's check both flags. So apply both directions and reverse filter ports. And this basically means that we allow also reply communication from server to the client. And for that communication, we need to reverse ports. Okay, so in the initial communication, we have 20 or 21 port as a, as a destination. And in the communication back, we need those ports as a source. Okay. And then let's also select the filter which was created in the in the previous step. Okay, action which is permit because it's a widely spaced policy model. Okay. So the contract is created. So let's go back to our uh, application profile. So demo application, let's check the topology canvas. And as we see, we have this EPGs created, but we don't see any contract between them. Why? Because contract is not associated with this EPG. So let's go to the, to the EPG one. Let's add provided contract. because EPG1 provides FTP service. Okay, and let's go to the EPG02 and add consumed contract. EPG2 is client, so it consumes FTP service. Let's verify the demo application right now. Okay, topology top, and as we see, we have contract icon in the canvas, and we have also the arrows which represents the specific relationship between these EPGs. Also, we have a filter information over here. Let's go back to virtual machines to verify new settings. First, I'm going to start traffic capture on the virtual machine 2. And then I'm going to initiate the traffic, FTP traffic to the FTP server. Okay, password prompt. I got connection. Okay, I can copy. Everything works fine. Let me verify on the FTP server. Yeah, there is some kind of activity because I got connected. Everything looks very good. So this is, this is really cool stuff. Let me just copy something, delete something. Yeah, this is working great. So let's check our packets in the Wireshark. As we see, there are a lot of them. Some of them are with the destination port 21. Yep. Some of them are with 20. So indeed, this FTP server is configured with these ports. Okay, as the next one, let me ping the FTP server and this should fail. And actually it is the request timeout. Why? Because ICMP is not allowed in our contract. Only FTP is allowed. So let's go back to the ACI, to our contract and let's modify this, uh, this contract to allow ICMP as well. But first, let me initiate continuous ping to the FTP server and modify the contract right now to have, you know, a real life visibility if the setting is put into effect. So I'm going to add ICMP filter, which is built into the CI. And right now the communication is actually working. Yeah, cool stuff. So let me remove it live. Okay, and I should have seen that communication fails. Yeah, request timeout. Great. 
Okay, so this is working as expected. As the final step, let's try to check if provider to consumer communication is allowed in the situation where provider initiates the communication. Okay, so not replies, but initiates. So on the second virtual machine, I'm going to start uh, FTP server. Okay. And I'm going to try to reach it from the provider side of the contract. So let me go to the virtual machine one and initiate the FTP traffic. Okay, so the protocol will be FTP and the host 192.168.2.102. Let's try to log in and this should fail. It is, the connection failed. And this is something expected, why? We have selected apply both directions option for the contract, but this allows only replies from the provider when consumer initiates the traffic flow, okay? So obviously this is valid only for stateful protocols. So for example, for ping, uh, this consumer provider relationship does not matter. Okay guys, so this uh, concludes our video. Thank you for watching. I hope this has been informative. Cheers.